I'm on a quest to find the best wings in America, and I'm traveling across the country state by state until I find them. I've already covered New England, and in this episode of the Studio Review, I'm traveling all over the Mid-Atlantic. For the purposes of this quest, the Mid-Atlantic region includes Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. I'd give myself an 8 out of 10 for naming this region. I feel like West Virginia is just tricky because it's not on the coast. So to be technical, I named this region the Mid-Atlantic slash Mid-Appalachia. And if you're upset about that, just wait until you hear about the Atlantic Coast Conference. No! I also made sure to get wings in our nation's capital, even though it's not technically a state. But to rewind a few months, I tried a chain called America's Best Wings with my friend Pat. Because, come on, if this place was really as good as they claimed, I figured I could end my quest right then and there. I also figured I'd throw a national chain in every once in a while just to provide a control for the experiment, something to compare these local places to. America's Best ended up scoring 37.5 out of 50, which was pretty similar to how Quaker Steak and Lube scored. I got the hottest sauce they have, which is called Nuclear, and even though it made me sweat a decent amount, it wasn't too bad so don't worry, I am gonna get some hotter wings later in this video. Okay, back to DC. There's a Korean-style fried chicken restaurant called Ko Chicks, which was suggested by Big Sherm 77 on YouTube, and it's widely regarded as the best place to get wings in DC. It's a little hole-in-the-wall type place that only does to-go orders. And as you wait for your order, you can hear the frying oil just on the other side of the counter. And just a reminder about my scoring system, I'll rate the wings on a scale of 1 to 10 in 5 different categories, so they'll get a final score out of 50. Ko Chicks doesn't have buffalo sauce, so I ordered the hot honey spicy and the honey lemon pepper. For appearance slash first impression, Kochik scored 7.5 out of 10. I don't think I knew that they'd be breaded, but I chalked that up to my own ignorance about the style of chicken, so I didn't let it affect the score. They scored a 9.5 out of 10 for meatiness slash size. And maybe the breading played a role in this, but these things were huge. For texture, I gave them an 8 out of 10, and I would describe them as crunchy but not crispy, if that makes sense. For sauce flavor, the honey lemon pepper was good, but a little bit dry. The sauce had kind of drained to the bottom of the container, so dipping it in the sauce helped enhance the flavor. The hot honey spicy was not very spicy, but I really liked the flavor. Could definitely taste hints of chili and honey, not too dissimilar from a general Sal's sauce. After a score of 8.5 for my overall experience, Kochix landed with a final score of 42 out of 50. All right, I'm on my way to Baltimore, and I figured I'd take this time to address a few of the comments on the first part of this series. A lot of people saying that my scores are way too high or that I've been too generous in my rating. If you look at it on a scale of one to 100, the highest score I've given so far is just a 91. At my high school, that was a B plus. So I stand by it. I feel like nothing I've had has been like gross. So there's still room for even lower ratings. And I've left room for if I encounter like multiple mind blowing wing places later on. Some people in the comments did not like the fact that I licked my fingers, which is fair. I, I get it. So I'll probably still do it. I just won't show it on camera anymore. All right, I think we're getting close. I made it to my next stop, which was a little place called Ibar, located on a nondescript street in Baltimore. This sports bar claims to serve Baltimore's only authentic buffalo wings. They have something called Chef Style, which I ordered for my hot buffalo wings, and then I went ahead and got some Honey Old Bay wings, because, you know, when in Rome. Yes. <laughs> Please, go on. The waitress asked me if I'd like my wings fried hard, and I was like, is that popular? And she said, oh, that's how everybody gets them. So that's how I got them. The wings came out and I gave them an 8.5 for appearance. I've run into this at a few places, so I should really come up with a better way of describing it, but I guess I would say they looked like a little misshapen. I don't know, like they remind me of Snoke or of Baby Voldemort, where you can kind of see the bones and like, tendons and stuff. Not necessarily a bad thing, just an observation. Anyways, I was unsure of the look of the buffalo wings, but the Old Bay wings smelled really good. I went 8 out of 10 for meatiness and 7.5 for texture. They were a little chewy, and I'm not sure that I loved the fried hard style, which in their defense, you don't have to order them that way. When it comes to sauce flavor, I asked a little bit more about their chef style, and apparently it's their buffalo sauce with garlic and then a blend of cheeses, including Parmesan Romano. So you can see the cheese and possibly some minced garlic cloves in the sauce. But let me tell you, they were delicious. Easily one of the best sauces I've had so far on this quest. And they had a pretty good kick to them as well, especially since this was just their mid-tier of heat. The Honey Old Bay ended up not being my favorite, but I still gave them a 9.5 out of 10 for how strong their chef-style buffalo sauce was. 9 out of 10 for overall experience of the wings, which brings them to a 42.5 out of 50. Current high score for the Mid-Atlantic region. Alright, I'm on my way to Delaware, and I'd love to take this time to tell you about Factor, who's the sponsor of this video. Factor delivers chef-crafted, dietitian 
kitchen approved meals right to your doorstep. If you're too busy to cook this fall, like if you're, I don't know, driving around the country eating chicken wings, Factor saves you the extra trip to the grocery store and the prepping and the chopping and the cleaning up. Their meals are fresh, never frozen, and they're ready to eat in just two minutes. Like on this drive from Maryland to Delaware, I could prepare 37 Factor meals back to back. One of the best things about Factor is that it's incredibly customizable. You choose how many meals you want and their menu gets updated weekly with choices that fit your lifestyle, like protein plus meals and vegetarian and vegan options. And those are just a couple examples. Factor has been a lifesaver for me when I'm editing, so I'll know I'll be able to get something fast without sacrificing taste or nutritional quality. They've been such big supporters of the channel and I know that they'd be supportive of you supporting me by supporting them. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to try Factor out, they want to give you 50% off your first box. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REVIEW50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com and the code is REVUE50. $10 for this toll? They never tell you about the tolls when you set out on a quest, but they should. All right, next up was Express Wings and Pizzeria in Newcastle, Delaware. By the way, if you're curious how I pick which restaurants to go to, I start with my list of viewer suggestions, which at this point has ballooned to over 800 restaurants. The more suggestions there are for a specific restaurant, the better, and then I'll cross-reference those suggestions with lists from food critics or readers' polls. And if it seems like a tie or it's too close to call, I'll go to Google Reviews and choose the place that is more highly rated, taking into account number of reviews as well. And then finally, local restaurants get preference over chains. I only got three suggestions for Delaware, and two of them were for Express, and one of them was for Anthony's Coal-Fired Pizza and Wings. Anthony's shows up on several lists as the best wings in the state, but after doing a little digging, I found out that it's actually a Florida-based chain. They sounded great, but it just didn't feel right using them as the representative for Delaware. Express also showed up on a couple lists, so I decided to go there. I plugged the address into my car GPS, and it took me to this taco truck, so I was pretty confused at first. Again, sounds great, just not what I'm looking for. I found the actual restaurant a few blocks away in an unassuming strip mall. Delaware Online describes this place as being as casual as it comes. And personally, I love having places like this mixed in there. Like, it wouldn't feel right if it was all sit-down restaurants. I just ordered five of their hot wings and then got a soda. I tried asking the person working there what their most popular other flavor was, and she said she didn't know. For appearance, I gave it a seven. The sauce was somehow thick and kind of oily at the same time. I kind of knew right off the bat these wings were either going to blow my mind or be slightly below average. For meatiness slash size, I gave it a seven. Not the smallest wings I've seen on this quest, but not very big either. I went eight for texture and tenderness. They weren't as crispy as I like, but they did fall off the bone. And for sauce flavor, I was a little bit confused. They didn't really taste like buffalo to me. And to be fair, when I went back and checked, they actually didn't use the word buffalo on the menu. They just called them hot. I guess they almost tasted like they were mixed in a bucket that had just been used for another sauce. I couldn't put my finger on what that second flavor was. And I know this sounds crazy, but it like reminded me of Christmas. And so I was thinking maybe cinnamon or nutmeg. I don't know. I have no idea. I went 7.5 for sauce flavor and another 7.5 for overall experience of the wings for a total score of 37 out of 50. Sadly, that does tie the lowest score of this quest so far. Not terrible wings, just hard to compete with some of these other places. So sorry, Delaware. I feel like I did you dirty on this one. My final stop of the day was the Piccalilli Inn located in Shemung, New Jersey. This place has been continuously operating since 1927 and it was the most suggested place for the state. They had a cool outdoor bar area and great vibes inside. There was a live musician playing You've Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story as I got seated over by a Christmas tree and a fish tank. I ordered the hot buffalo and the garlic parmesan based on a suggestion from Big Will Smith. Different Will Smith as far as I know. The wings came out and that's when I remembered reading that this place serves full wings, not just drums or flats, but both of them attached to each other. I had my work cut out for me. The buffalo smelled great and the garlic parmesan looked kind of similar to the ones from Ibar in that they were predominantly orange and not like that white sauce color that you get at Buffalo Wild Wings or the grocery store. I gave them an 8.5 for appearance slash first impression. My only criticism was that they looked a little bit oversauced. For size, they weren't super thick, but the fact that you get both the drum and the flat is a huge plus, so nine out of 10. For texture and tenderness, I went 9 out of 10. I feel like the only thing holding them back from a perfect 10 is that they could have used maybe a little bit more crunch. For sauce flavor, the garlic parmesan was good, but I liked the buffalo even more. It stung the lips a little more than other sauces, maybe because it was a little messier. 8.5 out of 10. I gave them a 9 out of 10 for overall experience, which is a 44 out of 50, a new leader in this region and tied for second in this quest. The next day, I drove across the entire state of Pennsylvania. All right, I'm currently on my way to Erie, Pennsylvania, and I gotta say, fall in Pennsylvania 
Pennsylvania is beautiful. Leaves are changing, it's incredible. Just to address a few other comments, I got a few criticizing me for having ranch with my wings, which first of all, I'll just say, I don't have a problem with people having ranch with their wings. And second, in my defense, I think the only time I mentioned ranch was when a particular restaurant served house-made ranch with their wings. But mostly the first thing, restaurants wouldn't have it on their menu if they didn't want you to eat it with their wings. More than one person said that they can't trust wing reviews from someone that wears a suit. That sounds like something maybe you need to unpack. I'm probably not gonna stop wearing a suit. All right, I hope that helps clarify a few things. As I've mentioned before, I'm planning on ordering the hottest wings at at least one restaurant in each video. And I'm planning on doing that at the restaurant I'm heading to right now. The restaurant was called Otis 12. I want you guys to know this place took me so long to get to. I could have gone somewhere way closer to where I live, but this place was ranked slightly higher. So I had to go there instead because I'm committed to this quest. Rules are rules. Anyways, check this out. I was only an hour and a half from Buffalo. And you might be wondering, why didn't I just go to Buffalo since it was so close? Well, New York is actually gonna be its own region because I got so many suggestions for Buffalo places. So I'm gonna work my way around the country with the New York region serving as the grand finale to this series. Otis 12 turned out to be a really nice sports bar with huge TVs and these garage windows that opened up to outdoor seating. This was funny to me, but their branding pretty much consisted of a bit emoji of the owner in different poses. They advertise 150 sauce flavors, but you can only get one per order. So I ordered 10 buffalo and 10 scorpion blood, which is the hottest sauce on their menu. I've been curious about these PB&J wings, but I'll have to try them in a future episode. For appearance slash first impression, I went nine out of 10. Only deduction was for looking a little Voldemorty. The scorpion blood didn't sting the nostrils in the same way that other hot sauces had in the past. It stings the nostrils. Brian, right, I'm gonna be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. So that put me at ease, at least for now. I went nine out of 10 for meatiness and eight out of 10 for texture. They were a little crispier and drier than I would have preferred. For the sauce flavor, I started with a score of eight out of 10. Because of the dryness, I feel like they could have used a little more sauce. I ended up going back and dipping the flats in the sauce that had pooled at the bottom of the bowl, and that bumped the score up to 8.5. Okay, now for the scorpion blood wings. There were 10 in the bowl, and my goal was to eat five before reaching for a drink or dressing. I felt a bead of sweat roll down my forehead before I even started. I dove right into wings one and two, and even though there's a delayed effect, I could tell my lips were gonna burn as soon as I made contact. And at this point, I was like, okay, not too bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are crazy spicy, but not in like a debilitating way. However, my nose was running uncontrollably, and I didn't realize that until the snot hit my lip. Wing five is where I would say things really started to feel bad. Sweating a ton, nose still running like a faucet. Fortunately, I finished all five wings, but the afterburn was really strong and stuck around way after I finished. So I just kept sweating and having to blow my nose and everything between my top lip and my nose just felt raw. Honestly, these were probably the most flavorful of the super hot wings I've tried because most are just bad. They just kind of hurt. So I decided to tack on an extra 0.25 for sauce flavor, bringing that up to 8.75 out of 10. My overall experience of the wings was a 9 out of 10, bringing the final score to 43.75. Not enough to dethrone Piccolilli, but a close second. My second to last stop for this region was by far the most unique restaurant I've been to so far on this quest. I scooted down to Wellsburg, West Virginia, where I John Denvered my way to Drover's Inn, which was built as a hotel in 1848. I had a lot of different suggestions for West Virginia, not many repeats, but this place made it on almost every list I could find of the best wings in the state. And I think I made the right choice. I mean, this parking lot was more packed than any of the other restaurants I've been to in this region. Some of the footage that I got inside was really bad, so I'm also gonna include some pictures from their website so you can see what I'm talking about. In a lot of ways, it still felt like a tavern from the 1800s, although they did add this extra section in the back in 2003. There wasn't any seating available upstairs, but they said I could go downstairs to the basement and sit at the bar, which I was actually really excited about because I had read reviews about this old kind of unfinished basement. It had brick floors, concrete walls, and a bunch of mugs and steins hanging from the wooden beams on the ceiling. The WVU game was also on. I ordered the hot buffalo and the buffalo garlic thanks to a suggestion from KC8900. The wings came and my rating for appearance was eight out of 10. Also, just as a heads up, I forgot to get footage of me actually eating the wings because the guy beside me at the bar started asking me about my Savannah Bananas t-shirt. I started out with an eight out of 10 for meatiness and size, but went back and changed it to an 8.5 after I found this in enormous flat hiding underneath the other wings. I went 9.5 out of 10 for texture, just really good in that category. And then 8.5 for sauce flavor. Decent buffalo sauce, but I really enjoyed the buffalo garlic. Overall experience was nine out of 10 for a final score of 43.5 out of 50, placing it right behind Otis. My final stop was in Norfolk, Virginia for the most suggested restaurant.
restaurant in the state. It's called the Dirty Buffalo, and it was founded by a native of Western New York who couldn't find any authentic buffalo wings in the area. Their menu says that the Dirty Buffalo is a three-time award winner at the National Buffalo Wing Festival in Buffalo. <laughs> that was dangerously close to that sentence where you just say buffalo a bunch of times. I got five of their hot buffalo and then five of their Cajun buffalo, which my waitress said was the award-winning sauce and the CEO's personal favorite. For appearance slash first impression, I went eight out of 10. The Cajun sauce smelled phenomenal. They looked a little less crispy than I would have liked, but I figured I'd find out soon enough. Nine out of 10 for meatiness slash size, pretty consistent with a huge drum in there. For texture, I was actually really surprised. They had a great crunch to them, so I stood corrected for my first impression. I updated that to an 8.5 and then gave them a nine for texture and tenderness. Crispy on the outside and tender enough to fall off the bone on the inside. The sauce was actually a really good mix of creamy and oily. I feel like a lot of places go too far in either direction. And the flavor profile was really good. Like the buffalo had a really nice tang to it, but I could see why the Cajun buffalo was the award winner. It was a little sweeter than the buffalo, but it still packed a punch. There was a lot of sauce. Like it looked like they might pour a little extra sauce on after plating the wings, but I think it still deserves a nine out of 10. My overall experience of the wings was a nine out of 10, giving the Dirty Buffalo a final score of 44.5 out of 50. The champion of the Mid-Atlantic. Unfortunately, I ended up leaving my credit card there on accident, so if anybody in Norfolk sees a credit card, let me know. I'm just kidding. I called them, confirmed it was there, canceled the credit card, the whole deal. That score puts the Dirty Buffalo just behind J. Timothy's in Connecticut. I've decided that at the end of the series, the winners from each region will compete head-to-head -to, -head to officially crown one restaurant as the home of the best wings in the United States of America. Next up will be the Southeast region, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see future installments of this series. And if you haven't already, let me know in the comments where I should go when I come to your state. And most importantly, just remember that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's going to be okay. I'll see you soon.